Hi, I'm Alex. And I'm Danny. And we're seriously nerdy about a lot of stuff. So many things, including the 1990s hit adventure Nickelodeon series, Legends of the, the Hidden Temple. Temple. I spent my summers heckling those the Ooh, purple parrots. Is that your team? No, I love the purple parrots. Wow. If you are like us and grew up as 80s babies and 90s kids, Legends of the Hidden Temple was a huge deal. Believe it or not, only ran for three seasons. Ugh. And during that time, they produced all of the content that we 90s kiddos know and love. We like it so much that we thought, could we build a tiny tabletop scale version of that temple, but make it sort of realistic and fantastical all at the same time? And nobody stopped us. They never do. There are many rooms in the temple. We want to do them all. It maybe makes more sense to break this into a multi-part project. We're just going to do the first two rooms, which are the crypt and the ledges. We got nothing left to hide before we get into the build. So here goes. For the temple itself, we took inspiration from the diagram that used to appear in this series that shows the entire temple laid out. And for our build, we're just going to start with the first two rooms. So we printed it out on paper and we used that as a template to build a structure out of balsa and basswood. Or basswood. Which one is it? Someone tell me in the comments. This means that for all of the other builds, we can ensure that everything is to scale and that it will line up and eventually we'll have an entire temple. For this very first build, we are going to focus on the crypt and the ledges, which are the first and last rooms that most players entered in season three of Legends of the Hidden Temple. So the room up top is the crypt, which if you remember is the room with the skeletons holding books and then below it was a dark shadowy area that players would have to crawl through to get back to Olmec. Now, I'll be honest with you, I looked at our craft supplies for this project and thought that what a great reason to use up our air dry clay. So I began beautifully building air dry clay for this back wall. Now, if you've used air dry clay before, you may know it warps and it's definitely gonna warp the balsa and basswood that are below it. But Danny in the past doesn't know this right now. She's very excited about all of these clay tools and stamps, so we're gonna let her keep going, but it's not gonna work out well for her. While I was recovering from the trauma of the air dry clay warping and tacking it down to dry with clamps, I figured I would turn my attention to the floor components, which seemed like a safer venue for the bass and balsa wood. So I just laid down some planks that would eventually make up the floor and the ceiling of the crypt. I thought it was a little more visually interesting if the planks were all different widths, because let's face it, although this is a fantasy world, it probably wasn't super easy to get planks of the exact same width in the Mayan era, right? One of the things I was most excited about with this build was to create a miniature suspension bridge, which I'm using in place of the ramp that runs between the crypt and the pit of despair. I took a jewelry class once that taught me this trick to take wire and put it in an electric drill to bind them together, and I thought it would be perfect to make rope. This means that the rope on my suspension bridge can support its own weight, so I don't have to worry about it working like string wood because it's wire. I can sculpt it or have it sit in whatever way I want without having it move. Part of the fun of this project is going to be reimagining things from the game show set into a fantasy Mayan world. So for aspects like this, the space between the ledges and the pit of despair, it was originally just ramps for players to run across and I am imagining them as maybe platforms from some sort of an archeology span dig. And it wouldn't be an archaeology dig without skeletons. That's right, the Skelly Boys have arrived. One of the first sets of miniatures that Danny and I painted together at the beginning of the pandemic was an Age of Sigmar Skeleton Warriors set. We actually looked to see if we could find another set of those Skeleton Warriors to use for this project, but we're not able to find them in print anymore. So we found these Skeleton Warriors and they did quite nicely. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if some more of those skeleton warriors found their way into other rooms of this temple. Oh, they for sure will. 
We decided to use oven bake Sculpey to shape the sarcophagi around our skeletons and then just made three of them. It wouldn't be a seriously nerdy project if we didn't do an insane amount of research to figure out how to make this fantasy world relate to the real world. So for this particular build, we based the inside of the cave on a recent archaeological discovery at Balam Ku, where they found incredible intact Mayan pottery in these caves, which was perfect for that cave area in the ledges. For the exterior, we based it on the Temple of the Seven Dolls in Zibel Kaltun, the Mayan site that has incredible stacked stone architecture that was perfect inspiration for the limestone that we're using on the upper parts of the build. So while this is a fantasy build, it's got elements of real world inspiration, which brings us to this dark shadowy place known as the Ledges that doesn't have a lot of storyline in the show and our justification for making that area some sort of an abandoned archeological site. After witnessing the warped chaos caused by using air dry clay on the first parts of the walls that we worked on, we decided to shift to instead using epoxy sculpt, which we figured had to be perfect, right? Because it works on every surface. I mean, it had worked on every surface so far. Well, it turns out that epoxy sculpt also doesn't really like to stick to balsa or basswood, so we struggled to get this to adhere as well. Ultimately, we were able to make it work, but Another lesson learned. For texturing the walls, we used a combination of carving out individual bricks and then smoothing them out using clay tools and texturing with foil and using a roller that we bought from Michael's. It's just a little plastic roller that has uh, like a cobblestone texture on it. And it's pretty cool. I will say the nice thing about epoxy sculpt is that it's very hefty, carries a lot of weight with it. So I knew that this was gonna help it feel sturdier for areas like the base, but I just didn't anticipate that it didn't wanna stick to the wood. Which is why I switched to a third type of clay. That's right. One temple segment, three different types of sculpting material, and just switch to the last of my beige oven bake sculpey clay. This was this was a hard one, y'all. Alex had to listen to a lot of my lamenting of trying to use three different sculpting mediums but make the bricks look consistent while the wood is warping. So it's safe to say we learned a lot in this build. One good thing that we learned is this idea of letting glue drip and dry on little cones to create the effect of stalactites or stalagmites. So here's my hope for this series, that we are inspired by the original storylines of the Legends of the Hidden Temple TV show, that we do a good amount of research of actual Mayan culture, but are also influenced by mythology and fantasy because at the end of the day, we do have giant iguanas running around an archaeological site and help justify things like what's going on with that scary door that a temple guard could pop out of there in the back. Gimlet is here to remind you to not use all your clay, that a foil insert in the center will save you delicious expensive clay. So the Temple of the Seven Dolls does not have a dome, but there are some Mayan sites that have really incredible looking dome structures. I am going to attempt to create a version of them, but looking back, this was the wrong way to build this all around. You can tell me about it in the comments, but trust me, I already know. We'll do better next time. But we knew that we needed to mimic the shape of this dome and very thick platform at the top of the crypt, as seen in the show. Don't listen to Danny. It's a very handsome dome. I think anyone would say, this is an excellent dome. In fact, perhaps maybe the greatest dome ever built? He's a liar. But I'm going to mask these speed build components with a trick I like to call plaster. 
uh, which is actually something that we'll see in some uh, Mayan sites is that the layer of plaster placed over the bricks, which is going to be very forgiving over some of these smoother surfaces. And then when in doubt, cover it up with vines. Gimlet is here to remind you to just cover it up with plaster and vines. We created a little outer frame to help mask some of the wibbly wobbly walls and then cut some jump rings in half to provide the securing mechanism for the suspension bridge. We've also been using UV resin a lot more since the over the garden wall build because it's just great at gluing stuff to things. Y'all, I won't lie, this tiny suspension bridge is my favorite thing on this entire build. Once the main fixtures were in place, we went ahead and based everything in black primer using our airbrush. We also covered the dome and the top floor with UK light mud from Vallejo's Model Air series. Our thinking was that as we build this temple and we have several different modules that need to connect, having a consistent base color would make sure that our temple walls always look the same so that no one would know by looking at it that they were built in different stages. Thus, consistent airbrush paint color. To get the effect of this very, very ancient limestone, I found the best move was to just keep layering different colors and paint styles. So you'll see me lay down washes in dark brown and black and follow that up with a dry brush and then come back with another layer of wash, follow it up with a dry brush. Really picking out little details and finding areas that needed a little extra grime just gave the whole thing a lot more interest and character. And I'm pleased to say that once paint was on, it is very difficult to tell which wall has air dry clay versus Sculpey clay versus epoxy sculpt. Thankfully, all of the sculpting techniques and a good layer of paint and grime really unified the look. Is there anything more satisfying than dry brush? So having seen what happens when you do layer up layers and layers and layers of paint, from darkest to lightest on the temple itself, I thought I might try that for these limestone sarcophagi. And it ended up working out great. So just starting with darker browns and making my way all the way up to this bone color led to really beautiful depth in something that was kind of a flat clay texture. We decided to try a light layer of chipping medium on the door. While that was drying, we went ahead and painted all of the wire like rope. And then while that was drying, we went back to painting the door with the nice vibrant orange. We took our inspiration for the painting design on the door directly from the motif you see in the show. Chipping medium is supposed to make it possible for you to scrape off some layer of paint and expose the layers underneath to give it this wonderful weathered quality. This was our first time trying it and it worked pretty well. We do think we'll try it again in the future with some other builds. I'll be honest, painting this tiny door made me nervous because I was scared that a temple guard was going to pop out of it. I don't know if we're hoarders, but we do now have an entire basket in our craft room of weird foliage that we can pull from. So it seemed appropriate that some little roots were popping out of ground level there. Do we need it? I don't know. Does it delight me? Yes. We knew we wanted to use Hero Forge to create our characters for the temple, but we also knew we didn't want to just do boring humans for all of them. So instead, we created some anthropomorphized iguana folk to be the orange iguanas in our version of Legends of the Hidden Temple. Despite doing pretty well in the games leading up to the temple run, of the 25 times that the orange iguanas made it to the temple run, they only made it out four times with the artifact. Sorry, Orange Iguanas. Maybe this is your time. Maybe this will be the time you make it through the temple. Another cool feature of using Hero Forge for our character design was access to a variety of prosthetic limbs so that we could represent a more diverse range of competitors. 
As a result, you'll notice one of our iguanas is sporting a very handsome prosthetic leg. We don't entirely know what the relic is at the end of this temple just yet, but we do know that there are six pairs of adventurers journeying through it. What route will they take? Will they encounter a temple guard? The choices are theirs, and theirs alone. We believe in you, orange iguanas. If this was the musical Hamilton, right now I would be Angelica singing to you about what I am proudest of because I'm about to make tiny pots. Is this necessary? No. But we were so inspired by the archaeological discovery at Balam Kud where they found these beautiful Mayan pots that we thought we have to put tiny pots in the build. And for whatever reason, we thought we should buy a tiny pottery wheel and make them. It's not the easiest thing to do in the world, but it is adorable, and they delight me. I've never seen anyone make tiny pots at this scale, but I watched a lot of YouTubers make uh, doll mugs, which was pretty close. Uh, it is incredibly difficult to make tiny pots this size, so we only ended up with seven or so after several hours of pottery wheel, but I regret nothing. The orange iguanas are placed. The pottery is there. We've got drippy stalactites slash stalagmites because I didn't actually learn which one was which. The last step is to add a little black 3.0 as the trim and hide all your mistakes with greenery. Let's go. For those who are wondering, stalagmites come from the ground and stalactites come from the ceiling. Yeah, yeah, whatever, nerd. Part one done. What did we learn? What did we learn? We learned that certain clays don't work well with simple woods. No. Well, we'll be better next time. We learned the beauty of having dedicated dry brushes. Before this year, I had just been using old brushes, but having dedicated dry brushes that are beautiful bristles that are really compact together. Chef's kisses wow. all around. What a difference it makes. And are you wondering, did we just use this temple build to justify buying a tiny pottery wheel? Yes, 100%. Obviously, yes. Of course we did. We needed an excuse, and this was barely a reason, but it counted. Tell us what you think in the comments. We're going to keep these going, but are there elements of the build that you would love us to focus on for standalone videos? I don't know. Uh, and while you're down there, make sure to like and subscribe, because that's what gets us more visibility in the algo. Thanks for watching this video. We hope you liked it and we'll see you in the next one. Let's roll that final footage. Three sixty-five is a regular year. Three sixty-six. How many year. days are in a leap year? I've been wrong my entire life. Go find the foil ball of King Gimlet, the stick of Prince Little Baby Kitten, the rusty tuna can of Prince Gimbledon. Ba ba ba. I am Olmec. It's D. Bradley Baker. Down the ladder, the into the chamber below the chamber you were in. Don't get caught by the temple guards. They'll ruffle your hair and take your pendant. Blind, it was nicely. not my cat. We're buddy cops. We're seriously nerdy about patrolling these streets.
Would you ever actually go back to back with a person like this? Like in nature? Okay, so if you are surrounded but and you have guns akimbo, we're gonna do a- Yeah. We're gonna- So the one that shoot do, me goes gonna... right through me to into you. But like if we're not in a shootout situation, is there a-, a No, nah, that's your only like situation. Like if you're in line at Comic Con, that's nice. Is it? That seems like it's uncomfortable. Are you sitting straight forward? 